I'm Dan Durier. Welcome to the star and the story. As you know, this is the theater in which the actor is given the rather unique opportunity of selecting his own story. I believe I selected well. I remembered a story that Kathleen Norris had written many years ago called Sinners. And from it, we developed a screenplay which we now call The Lie. It's a strange story of emotion and suspense. In it, I play the part of a man whose life has been changed by a lie. And you'll meet the woman who told the lie and see what happened when she tried to set things straight. And so, the lie. You're going to have a visitor, a woman, an attractive woman. There's no one who could visit me. I'm all alone. I'm not even me. Oh, but there is someone going to visit you. She's waiting in my office. It'll be a mistake. She'll be looking for someone else. He's ready now. I hope you're sure, Mrs. Kent. I'm positive. It's taken me years to find him. He may not even recognize me. I've changed so. Even my hair. The names aren't the same. Then he's using a different name. Oh, we've suspected that. It's not uncommon in the state sanitarium. It's a matter of pride. But in his case, of course, if he is the man you're looking for, it would be more than a matter of pride, wouldn't it? What's the condition of his health? Well, he could get well. All the doctors have said that. But he doesn't wish to. It's simply that the man has nothing to live for. Mr. Huggins, this is Mrs. Laura Kent. I don't know you. I imagine you don't know me either. Will you leave us alone, please? If you wish. Your name isn't Huggins. Your name is Ripley. Jim Ripley. Kent is my married name. When you knew me, I... Do you... Do you remember Laura Ames? Laura Ames. The little girl. The little girl on the stand. You remember? I remember. I remember you on that stand, talking, talking. They couldn't stop you talking about me and Kane Madison. I remember I tried to get at you to shut you up. That didn't help me any either. That was a long time ago. I was only 12. Please try to remember that too. You were old enough to lie. And you were old enough to be believed. God forgive me, I... I did lie. What possesses a little girl? What possessed me? A fantasy, a dream that becomes real, a, a desire to be heard, to be gifted with attention, to be important. I stood at a window one afternoon watching the leaves fall. Kane Madison had been murdered the day before and I was thinking about it. A kind of frightened thinking. And then I saw you pass on a bicycle. It started then. For no reason I can think of, clearly, it started and, and it never stopped. I told my mother I'd seen you up at Kane Madison's the day of the murder, running away, scared-like. At school the next day at recess, I told some other little girls the same story, building it up all the time, lying, 
knowing I was lying, but I couldn't stop anymore. When I got home that afternoon, Mr. Robbins was there, the district attorney of the town. I remember him asking me to promise that I wouldn't say any more about Kane Madison and you. I was very happy then, and I felt that my lying was finished. It just never occurred to me that he was holding me as an important witness. I told the lie in court. I told it better and longer. To make it stick, I pointed you out. And they told me I was a brave little girl. If they had sent you to the chair, I would have spoken. I remember telling myself that's what I would have done. But there were extenuating circumstances, and I remember you only got 20 years. That's all. My folks moved away. I made a girl back home promise she'd let me know what happened to you. She never wrote. And then I tried to put you out of my mind and forget the whole thing. I couldn't. All the years at school, the years I was married, we went out west to live. My husband had a lot of money to begin with, and we made more. And I never forgot you. I couldn't. And when my husband died, I started looking for you. It's taken me years to find you. Well, you found me. You made your confession. You've cleansed your soul. You're free. I forgive you. You forgive me? What else can I do? You don't have a trunk full of years you can give back to me, do you? If only I could. If only I could. And don't worry about the full 20 years. They only made me serve 15. Please, give me a chance, please. A chance? For what? To twist the lie into truth? Most of the people are dead, and the rest wouldn't bother to listen. It's all buried somewhere under dust. So will I be, very soon. I don't want to go back. That's not what I want. Go away. Whatever you want, you want it too late. What I... What I want from this moment on is to look after you, to make you well, to put you on your feet. I have a ranch in California. There's not enough I can do for you to clear me of my guilt, but let me try. Let me try to give you a chance for some of the years ahead. You're trying to breathe fire into a man without a soul. I don't believe that, that you have no soul. That's one of the things they took away from me, too. I started life a charge on the state. I didn't get out of the orphanage till I was 13. At 20, I was back on the state again. For 15 years, Fifteen years. When I got out, I tried to find a corner I could hide in. I was dead. <laughs> Worse than dead. There wasn't one day in my life I ever looked forward to. Then I found myself back on the state again. Here. Now you want to take up the burden? I'm the reason there is a burden, and I intend to do something about it. I can get you out of here, if you want to get out. Do you like it here? My ranch in California is quiet and peaceful. It's miles from town. The fruit trees stretch out as far as the sky. California. There was always a great word with me. It has a real pretty sound to it. It'll be another world, Jim. Will you come with me? If you want to pick up the franchise from the state, you're welcome to it. I'll make all the arrangements in the office. We'll leave today. Will you pack your things? Pack? You mean change? 
Don't worry about that. I'll advance you some money. How soon can you leave? I'll be waiting for you at the door. I was just saying it's nice to be home, Jim. I hope you feel that way. It's a beautiful place. It's yours, too. The stairway goes up to your part of the house, and the lower floor is mine. Pancho, take Mr. Ripley up to his room. Si, senora. You must be very tired, Jim. Why don't you rest? I will. I am tired. I like it in California, Senor Ripley. To keep the sun out, Senor, it is much cooler when the windows are closed. Is there anything you would like? Something I can get you to drink? Nothing. Oh, Pancho. Yes, Senor Ripley? Uh, no one lives in this house beside you? No uh, ranch hands? No, Senor Ripley. The ranch hands live in a house at the other end of the ranch. I do not live here either, senor. Just in the daytime, I come to help the senora. She likes to do for herself. You are alone here. You and the senora. Uh, how far away, uh, how far is the ranch hands' house? A half mile. A little less, no more. That'll be all, Pancho. Con permiso, senor. very well, Mr. Ripley. That's good to hear, Doctor. I, uh... Yes? Oh, never mind. Something you wish to ask? Well, it's not so much about myself. It's Mrs. Kent. What about Mrs. Kent? She's so nervous, distraught. I thought maybe I should tell you. She has long hours of depression. She kind of scares me sometimes. I wasn't aware of it. Maybe I should mind my own business. But I'm very fond of Mrs. Kent and, of course, very grateful to her. I wish I could help her. Perhaps I can. I'll drop by in a few days when she's home and... You won't say that I mentioned anything, will you? Not necessary at all. It isn't good for someone to be that depressed. It isn't safe. Well, goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Ripley. coffee? No, thanks. The doctor's report sounds very good, Jim. Yes. He said that getting well was only a matter of time. Seems everything is just a matter of time. Living. Dying. Prison. Getting sick. Getting well. He asked me to be patient. 
He didn't know that he was talking to a man who once counted 15 years, second by second. Did he? No. In the few weeks that I've been here, have there been many questions? None at all. We're fairly isolated here. Jim, I've opened a bank account for you. When you're completely well, you, you can run the ranch, but until then, you can draw on the account. You, you give so much. Does it help? Yes. Yes, it does. Everything I have, the ranch, if I thought it would make up for what I did to you, I'd gladly give it. As it is, I... I've changed my will, just in case anything happens to me. You even intend giving after you die? Why should you give anything? I have to. Even though I know it, well, it isn't enough. One lie. Do you think you have to go on paying for one lie? You did. I guess I could make it easier for you by being more grateful. I don't expect that. Just let me give anyway. It, it makes the nights easier to endure. I better clear away the dishes. I'll help you. So, Mrs. Kent told me that she was going to change her will on my behalf. She already has. She has? Well, I don't want that at all. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I don't believe I understand. I don't want to be mentioned in Mrs. Kent's will at all. She's done more than enough for me. Well, I'm afraid that's something you'll have to discuss with Mrs. Kent. I have no authority to change her will. I appreciate that, but... I thought maybe you could... Well, I'll talk to her myself. I'm sorry to have bothered you. No bother at all. Good day, Mr. Spargo. Good day, Mr. Ripley. I think I'll say good night, Jim. Laura. Uh... I was wrong about something. I'd like to talk to you about it. Back at the sanitarium, I said it didn't make any difference whether people knew I'd killed Kane Madison or not. Well, I was wrong. It does make a difference to me. I want to be cleared. We'll leave tomorrow. No, uh, we don't have to go back there right away. But I, I want you to write a letter to the authorities telling them that, well, everything that you told me all right. I'll write the letter if that's what you want. Write it just like you said it to me. How all these years you've felt this guilt for having sent me to prison for a crime I didn't commit. That's what I want. I want you to write that letter. I'll write it tomorrow morning. I'd rather you wrote it tonight. All right. I'll write it now.
Have you come to kill me, Jim? I'm here. That's why you had me write the letter. So it could look like suicide. Taking my life will only release me. It still won't give you back those years. Will it make you feel any better if I'm dead? I was writing you a note. I'm going away. But you can't. We can forget about last night. Please stay here. You don't understand, Laura. But maybe you will if you read the note. There's a lot more I wanted to say, but it's not important. Jim, this isn't true. It is true. You killed Kane Madison? That's right. You're free now. Free of any guilt because of my being in jail. Sure, you lied. Because you didn't actually know I killed Kane Madison. And you made up the whole story about seeing me at the house the day it happened. That part of it wasn't true. But the lie you told hit the truth smack on the nose. That's why I really hated you. I would have gotten away with it completely, except for your lie. But, but you weren't anywhere near the Madison place. How could you kill Kane Madison? Very simple. Kane Madison wasn't killed at his own place. We fought at Lenhart's barn, and Kane ran all the way home to die. That isn't possible. It is possible. It happened. I can remember hitting him again and again with that piece of pipe. Then he pulled away from me and ran. When he got home, I guess he just collapsed on the floor and died. Then my lie. You were guilty in spite of my lie. Yes. And maybe it was the thing that saved me from the chair. They didn't try to look any deeper for more evidence after they heard your story. But because of my age and because after all it was just your word, they let me off with a prison term instead of the death sentence. I'm free after all those years. You're free. I'm sorry, Laura. I should have told you back there at the sanitarium. Goodbye, Laura. If you did kill Kane Madison, then why did you try to kill me? You didn't have to lie. 